Hello. Yesterday I had some wonderful questions posted on my YouTube channel that I want to address. I think they also will be very useful to my students. The first question was, essentially, the person wanted to set up their program so that they could break up text and just have a press enter to continue. The problem they are having is that the way they had this set up, they had to actually put a string in and press enter. It, it, it wouldn't just accept a straight enter. And that's essentially what I have set up right now. You can see here I declare a scanner object. I print some I print out press enter to continue. And then I I use zs.next to take a, to take an input. Notice I'm not actually gonna store that value anywhere. I'm just gonna take an input and do nothing with it. But it provides that pause in my program. I've printed out end just to kind of help illustrate when the program finishes. So if I run this program right now, it kind of comes up. It says press enter to continue. And if I press enter, it actually doesn't move forward because it requires me to put something into the actual program. There we go. So the question is, how do I how do I set this up such that I can just press enter and it kind of moves forward with the program? So to do this, we're going to take a look in the scanner class documentation. Again, it's really important as a, as a programmer you get comfortable using the API for whatever language you're working in. This thing is full of information and though it can be a little intimidating, once you learn how to read it, you're going to be able to do a whole bunch of really cool things. So if we scroll down here, we're going to actually scroll down to the method summary. So methods are just small little chunks of code that can be executed um, that someone else has written for you. Um, you'll eventually write your own methods and in fact I'll show you how to do that in this video. So if we scroll down, these are all the different methods in the scanner class. There's lots of them. Don't even try and memorize them. What I want you to do is get comfortable at looking and, and finding the one you want and understanding how to use it. So it turns out all these ones that start with the word next are all for taking inputs. It turns out there's a, there's a useful method here called next line. There's nothing in the brackets, so that means it doesn't require anything to run. It has no parameters and it returns a string, meaning that when I invoke the method, when it's done, it spits out a string that we can then use in some capacity. It's important to highlight that if you click on the name of the method, you jump down to some more detailed documentation. Um, in this video, we won't talk about how to read this necessarily, but I do encourage you to click on the method name because sometimes that would be useful. So it turns out there's a really useful method, like I said, called next line. And next line takes an entire line including a carriage return or enter. So if instead of using s.next to use s.next line, and I run this program again, it moves forward simply with the user pressing enter. Now remember, this method returns a string. So some people would want to do this. because they say, well, if it's returning a string, I have to put it somewhere. This would still work, but if the whole point of this is simply just to press enter and not take an input, just because a method returns something doesn't mean you have to actually use that something as returned. So before I get into question two, I want to talk about an important idea. One thing that I, that I encourage all programmers to do is to build a tools class. Good programmers are always programming. A tools class is a collection of methods that you use regularly. It also is somewhere where you can kind of play around and do some neat things if you're trying to learn something new. If you use those methods over and over again, you can then just keep your tools class and constantly call on them. So I'm going to jump into my tools class here. In my classes, I typically call the tools class dollar and then your first and last initial. It means when students pass me their programs, I don't have to actually try and rename all their tools classes. But the key thing is keep it short, and you'll see why in a second. So I've written a method in here called entCont, which essentially is press enter to continue. Now there isn't proper, as there isn't a proper header on this method, so I want to include one. If I put slash star star, that's a special command to Java in Eclipse. Oh, just did something funny. Let's see if we can fix that. Let's scroll down a bit. If I do slash star star, and press enter, it actually auto-generates um, comments. If it, and it will actually print out the, the parameters, so what it takes, it takes nothing, what it returns, 
void means it returns nothing. This method pauses the program and waits for the user to press enter. So what I've done is essentially I've written that code in some small little method and now I'm going to use it. Because every time I want the program to pause, I don't want to have to write all this out. So let's delete it. So the name of the method, jump over here, is called entcont. So I might think I can do entcont and then it should work. Here's the problem. I'm currently in the class $PM runner. Any classes that I use to test something, I often will put runner in. So I'm using this to test my $PM class. The compiler doesn't know where entcont is because I'm not in the $PM class, which is where that method is located. I'm in the PM runner. So I just have to direct it to where that method is. Since the method is static, I'm going to access it using the name of the class. I'm going to come in here, and I put $PM.entcont, and it works. So now if I run my program, when it gets to this line, it actually jumps to here, executes this code, and then jumps back. So what it does is it prints out press enter to continue, I press enter, and then it moves forward. So now, as opposed to writing that, all that code every time, I can simply invoke that method. Invoke meaning call. And that will provide a nice little pause, a dramatic pause in my program or my game or whatever I'm doing. So if I run it again, press enter to continue, enter, end, press enter to continue, enter, end again. So I'm actually going to stop here, and in the next video I'm going to address this second question. I want my program to take an integer input, but not crash if the user enters a string. Great question, and I look forward to answering it.